Hello everyone, it's Laurel here. I was sitting here playing, pulled out a bunch of my stuff, and I just thought I would come on and chat with you for a bit while I'm playing. Um, Tracy Fox has, a, I believe it's a challenge going on in her group right now. It's called Love a Bug, and you have to create something with bugs. I have so many kits <laughs> spread out around me. I've pulled out all of them I could find that have um, bugs and stuff in them. Of course, right now you're looking at a bunch of butterflies. Uh, they seem to be the thing I go to the most. Um, but I do have bugs and stuff as well that I'm going to be putting together in a little booklet. So I just thought I'd come on and film some of it with you guys and um, chit chat for a bit. So I know you guys know I like to work with, um, and you're probably going to see my table shake, which is weird. It's my table. It's not actually my webcam. It is up really high, and I'm standing now. Um, I love to work with wood glue. I now use the Gorilla wood glue. I think that's the one I had before, too. I've actually used a whole bottle already, just on different projects through the year. Um, but this is, like, one of my favorite things to use when I'm trying to add something to a page or something on a page. Uh, here's one that's done, and it's a bee, and it just, or a bee. This is a moth, not a bee. <laughs> it um, it actually makes them stand out really well on the page. So I do like to use that a lot. I have another one right here where I think I did the flowers on it. I do. So this one, I actually did the roses on here trying to get the right angle with my light um, and it just makes the color pop and it makes it pop out of the page this is actually a tag but this um, this line also has some bugs uh, in it as well some butterflies and different things this is one of the envelopes and unfortunately I can't tell you the name of the kit right now because it's all cut up and with the amount of kits I have right now I'm more likely to know the newer ones than the names of the older ones, but this is also an envelope to that gorgeous kit. It's also the kit I used in my um, attache that I made. So I can look it up and add it in the description box below, but I'm actually just sitting here playing. So I just thought I'd come on and chit chat with you guys while I'm playing. Um, I like to take a lot of the butterflies and stuff like that and just coat them in the wood glue. What I also do just to give them um, a pop of color and it makes the color bleed is I like to add um, my distress oxides or distress inks to them as well. And this one, I actually added a purple and a blue and um, what was it? Aged mahogany and fired brick and just, it's not dry yet. So you're not going to really see the whole pop of color. But if I pull it, put it, pull it in, you'll see how it's actually starting to, starting to blend. Um, this one's not actually dry yet. I just did that one a little while ago. Uh, so I have been, I like to add color and stuff to some of them like this one. This one's pretty much almost dry. It's, a, I'm going to say it's a wasp. It doesn't look like a bee, but it could be a bee. But I just added some of the fired brick to the bottom of it. And it just kind of makes it just pop. And of course I added some color to the outside where I, um, use the wood glue on there as well. So I just thought I'd come on and kind of show you guys. It is it is a patience thing. You do have to take your time a little bit. Um, I did color this one with different, um, different distress oxides again, and I use like really fine brushes. This one I use for my really tiny stuff, and this one I use as well and this one works really well. I was using a q-tip but in some of the spots the q-tip tends to want to run out so that's why I started using brushes and the brushes actually work really well with the distress oxides and then um, on this one I just took some tea bag. I've been collecting a ton of tea bags from being home and drinking tea and I just put two pieces on the two corners and I used a mat Mod Podge on those. I'm also going to be doing some and I believe it was Debbie Kip that did it on Kip's Corner um, when she was working on, I want to say, or Alice, but I don't know if that one had bugs in it. Anyway, she used the Sparkle Mod Podge. And oh my God, and I'm, I'm hoping it was Debbie that did it. If not, I will go back 
and look um, and try and see whose video it was. I'm almost sure it was Debbie. It could have been Lori Fusco, Girl on a Ridge. I'm not sure. Um, somebody recently did this with the with the Mod Podge, and I could be completely wrong altogether. I've seen so many videos, um, but it looks amazing on butterflies and things like that. So I did go and get one of these. I am going to be um, using this as well. And isn't it funny how this is a purple? Anyway, <laughs> so I just thought I'd come on and um, I saw the challenge this morning and I am working on something else using her um, Alter Dispatch right now. And the inspiration came from um, the folder we're using and the idea came from Dawn at... Um, Oh my God, I'm going to, I don't know why I can never, when I'm on here, I can never think of her, her YouTube name, um, Book Vandal Shop. There it is. I don't know why that just doesn't want to come to me. So I've been working on that and I just stuck it to the side real quick and pulled out all my stuff and decided to start playing. So I just thought I would um, come on and film and kind of show you guys the process of how I do this. I've had quite a few people ask me. Um, how I do that and what glue I use and things like that. So I could sit and this is kind of like my fussy cutting. I could actually sit and just do this for hours. It's very relaxing to me. I think what it does is it kind of just um, shuts off my brain for a while. And there aren't a lot of things um, that do that because I tend to go about 900 miles an hour. And this kind of really slows me down, just like my tatting and my fussy cutting and things like that. So uh, I really enjoy doing this. And I just have this thing for, I don't know, uh, I like to add so much to things. I love the challenge. I like things to be different. Um, it's just, it's kind of me and how I've always created when I make anything is I don't just like it the way it is. I have to do something to it. And I'm going to pull this one up in a minute and show you what I've decided to start adding now that I think just gives it a little pop as well. I don't want to use a lot of that stuff on here, but in certain instances, I think it looks really nice. And if you can see the eyes, I added two little um, rhinestones in a blue to the eyes. And I just... I know everybody can't see everything I add when you're showing it on a video. I think it's more so that I know it's there and I know that's what I did. So I just like to add a little bit. And I always tend to go with the wings first um, when I'm doing this. And I like, I don't like to just brush it. As you can see, it's kind of, it's thick. I just like to kind of put it on and move it around, but I'm not pushing the brush to the paper because it's so it then puts so fine of a coat and I actually want this to be raised kind of like the um what you get when you use triple thick now triple thick if it's something that's going to move around and bend will crack especially on paper I know because I I did this whole set of butterflies and I used triple thick and they all cracked when I tried to bend them just a little bit so that's why I really like the wood glue. It stays very pliable. And um, if you put on a thicker coat, then when it settles, it still leaves that raised effect. And that's that's what I'm going for is I like it to be like it's off the page a little bit. So like I said, I kind of put on a lot on my brush. And then if you get a little bubble, you can just pop it with the side of your brush. And it does get bubbles on it sometimes. I don't always catch them, but that just adds, you know, adds a little bit to the picture. Um, I don't mind them. I don't like a lot of them, but I don't mind a few of them here and there. And if they're bigger, I do pop them. But I like to just, I like to keep the amount high. And I just start with a little bit over here, and that's what I pull from. And like I said, I don't actually push down the brush onto the paper. I just kind of build it up there. And it is, see how I just stopped talking? It kind of just helps me relax and kind of shut down my brain a little bit. Um, and I, sometimes I'll sit and make a whole bunch of stuff like this just so I have it ready 
Um, I do have a bunch ready, but I, like I said, I pulled out a bunch of her digitals that I have. I have just, oh my gosh, if I show you guys, uh, I'll show you a few just to give you an example. This is all fussy cut flowers and bugs and butterflies. And this one is all hold on, teeny tiny, not all of it, but most of it down in here if you see in the bags, is all teeny tiny um, things that I cut up. And these are all Tracy's. And my camera is froze. Oh, okay, came back. It must be the weather. We're having some storms. Then I have this one. <laughs> I have a lot. Uh, I have Tracy Fox. It has all, she has a big folder, and then she has all these containers. These are all um, flowers and things like that. Some of these are on fabric. Oh. I have this one. <laughs> this is probably the biggest one. And it is just all tags, tickets, her um, ephemera, um, all the letters in different colors. I know it's kind of far away, but yeah. So I sit and I will print out everything and then I will sit and fussy cut, which is what I just spent um, two days doing. I sat and fussy cut out all of the um, construction cards. And then these are all the, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I'm definitely like, have to be one of her biggest fans. Um, her digitals just speak to me. And that this is patchwork. And she just came out with patchwork papers. And I'm so excited. So I cannot wait to play with these and use the papers. And I do love mixing her kits together and using just different ones. So at some point, I'm going to start just putting specific things together because I feel like I have them all separated and everywhere you can think of. And I could I want them kind of all together. So yes, I have a ton of Tracy's Digis. So I just kind of pulled from all that. But you can see now on this one where you can see I used colors and the colors are starting to come through. Uh, when it dries, it's going to look gorgeous. But I always, either I do the legs first or the legs last, but I always tend to go at the wings and then work my way um, out. And I, I craft backwards a lot. Like when I draw, when you draw, you're supposed to draw left to right so that you don't smear. I draw right to left, which makes things very difficult. Same with this. I will leave this middle for last, and somehow I manage to get it in there without bumping anything. I don't know why I work that way. Um, it's just how it works best for me for some reason. And again, I'm not actually pushing the brush into the paper. I'm just dragging um, the wood glue over. And if I see somewhere where I think it's too thin... You can always go back and add more. And the only thing I'm picky about is making sure I stay in the lines. And these lines are super close together, and I don't want them to touch. But So I kind of just, and when you move the brush, it kind of seems to know where the lines are sometimes. I don't know if that's because of the ink, um, where the ink of the image is, but it seems to just follow that line most of the time, which I think is kind of cool. So it might actually, the the depth or something might be different because of the ink in the paper or something might be different that it picks that up. I'm not sure, but I like it. So this is a dragonfly. I'm actually going to be making a little pocket folder thing, um, and I'm going to try and use not just butterflies and stuff, but I do have a bunch of bugs and stuff sent, set to the side and some pockets and everything. So what I'll do is I'll go through first and decide like what I want to wood glue, what I want to ink, what I want to add like um, the tea bags and stuff too to get the muted colors. And I, I, I'm, I try to figure out everything I want to add to something first and sometimes I pull out a lot of stuff and that's just that's just how I work I can't I can't do um simple <laughs> Tracy is very good at doing her three things and it looks amazing on a page I can't do that 
I have to add, <laughs> like, I try, but then I have to just go back to being me. And me is just how I've always created. I have all my little charms and everything ready over to the side and um, of different stuff that I want to use here in here. And it's almost like I want to add everything to everything. You know, I want to add paper clips. I want to add charms. I want to add um, tabs. And it's like everything has to have everything. I don't know why I feel like I'm missing something if I don't add everything in. And see, like this one's drying and it's still a little thin. So I'm just going to go back over this part a little bit and add some more in here. And that's okay. It will still fill together and work just fine. Um, so I like to sit and make all my little embellishment pieces and stuff. Now, again, with this, you want to be careful because if I were to take the brush and run this across because it's got, has the distress oxide on here, it's just going to run the color everywhere. And that's not what you want. That's why you kind of just want to let it sit on top because you want the wood glue to pull the color straight up. I mean, I guess you could try it and smear it and then see how that works. That might actually look nice, too. I don't know if I've actually done anything like that, but um, I kind of like it kind of just works. It's magic just from sitting by itself and that butterfly is actually drying really nicely. So I will pull that one up and show you in a minute. And I did add some more blue to his, I don't know if, if you want to call it a tail. I'm not sure. Um, so that as this starts to dry, you're going to see the blue come through as well. Um, just to give it a little more, give it a little more color because I do want the colors to pop in this when I make them. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to emboss some and I have an idea for these three right here that I did. I haven't wood glued this one yet, but I did add some blue in there. So when I put the wood glue on, you will, you will see it. It will start to come through. And I think that's what I like about it. I first did it when I was making, um, when I did the full wood one. And the, I think I used cardstock and I think I might have doubled it. And it, the, it actually looks like wood pieces. I did gears and, um, a lock and a key and they actually turned out really nice. And, looked like looked like wood and we tried different things everybody wanted to see how it would look with um regular glue for people that didn't have mod podge and we tried different things and the wood glue fortunately is or should i say un unfortunately to those Ooh, now see i just crossed over in there so because i'm a spaz i'm going to use something sharp and just pull that out of there because i don't want those two leaves to touch so I'm just going to pull it out. All right. Um, the wood glue does seem to work the best. If you don't have it, by all means, you can use um, Mod Podge and, you know, regular Elmer's glue. Uh, I do know they make some generic wood glues, you know, at, at um, Walmart and stuff, just like Walmart's brand and stuff. I'm quite sure those would work as well. I don't know, I like something about the Gorilla Glue, and I love that it's just like this old color. It's like a brownish. It's, you know, it's for wood. It's meant to blend in. So that's the dragonfly done. So we're going to, we're going to let it sit, and you can start seeing the, you know, now the purples are starting to come through, and of course, you guys know I always got to add my purple in there somewhere, but I'm going to show you this one because it's already changing. Um. And this butterfly was just some brown colors, and I just thought it would be pretty. I added in, you know, the orange and the blue and the purple and that brick color. So you can actually start to see it coming through really nice. And it just gives, it makes it pop off the page. It gives it something. Um, like I said, these are going to be used for something else, but I need to do this one. And it's really teeny tiny, and I know you guys can barely see it, but believe it or not, I am pulled all the way in. So these are like an inch, so they're really small. So I'm going to use my, this teeny tiny brush and it actually works really well. Now this might be boring for some. Um, I don't, I love doing this. 
Um, I would sit and watch someone do this just because this is how you learn to do different things is by watching others. And I've learned so much stuff from all the other ladies. Um, I'm loving this, you know, learning so much about paper and journals and all that stuff. I mean, I, I, I look back at some of my stuff when I first started and some of it I really like. I found myself and then I, I lost myself. And now I'm trying to find myself again and I'm struggling a little bit with that because I think it's because the more you learn, the, the more you want to do. And I'm still really trying to find, <clears throat> I don't know if it's a style or just, you know, most people know me as I love purple. And of course, I would love to create everything in purple. Um... Purple, to me, I don't know, it's just something I found years ago, and it's something I, I'm drawn to. It um, It's very calming for me. Um, I have to have something on me always with purple. Um, of course, I have my tattoo, which that's very important. Prince was a big part of it. He started it when I was 16, and he was just extremely talented and I was drawn to him, and I think he felt the same way about the color. So, you know, they say he is purple, and he was. I mean, oh my goodness. But it's, it's, whenever I have purple around me, especially if I'm creating with purple to me, I create the most amazing things, and I'll look at them and go, oh my God, I, I just, oh my gosh, I should say, I just made that. Um, I do surprise myself sometimes. I haven't really in a little while now. I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to get back to that and not, it's not that I, I, I don't want to overthink, but I want to be creative and I want to make sure that um, it's something I create is definitely me. And that's not always the case. I think sometimes with some of the stuff I do, I look at it and it's just, mm, that's okay. Like I'll look back at a tag and I'll go, okay, well, that was off the Laurel. I don't know what you were thinking, but, um, you know, just to see where you've come and the different things you've learned and things like that. My beating and all that, my tatting, I'm always very proud of all that because that is a feat in itself. Um, and my crochet just to, you know, create with your hands like that and make something out of, you know, these little bitty beads and things like that and this little bitty string. So I'm, I'm, I always do well with that. I think that's probably why I step away from it here and there because I'm so trying to figure out my thing with the paper. At first, when I saw the junk, junk journals come out, I told everybody, I said, I will never, ever get into that. I'm not, a, and I wasn't, I'm not a paper person. Um, it just does nothing for me. And now it's such a challenge because I'm still just trying to find my way and find me in in all of this and I think that's I have so many projects started and not finished because I'm I struggle with finding me in them or deciding what what I you know what I want to do with them so on this one I'm going to show you I'm going to yes it is a bright blue but if I add the wood glue it's just going to make it pop all the more and I'm actually going to try and change something let's see if this works because I am in all the way so let me try something. 